Hey YouTube, I'm back. Transmission's done. I went in and had a bite to eat. Sat for a little bit. Now I'm cleaning up the garage. You guys recognize the old vice? Uh, I can't remember if I showed you earlier. I think I did. Soft jaws. I've got pieces of uh, uh, eight inch aluminum. Uh, angle iron and I just had some of that adhesive uh, strip magnets that I stuck inside there and that goes on top of the flat of the jaw here so they stay in place works for me and then uh, when I don't need them I don't want to lose them so I have just an old soup can taped to the pedestal, I just drop them in. Works for me. Um, just moving this out of the way, I was just going to show you that quickly. Um, just hang on a second. Okay. I'll show you something else here, a little something else. Why is my cord so short? I don't know. Anyway, many of you might uh, likely recognize this. Black & Decker Workmate. Well, I unfortunately had to... I threw a couple pieces of half-inch scrap together to laminate it together and... replace the original one that had deteriorated. But... If you ever want to use this for anything greasy or oily, it's going to make a mess of it. You know that. Also for heavy duty stuff. Well, what I have here, this was a freezer door of a refrigerator. I took it off, took out the insulation, made a couple of notches here, and those notches are for where the cranks are here so I can get this right in but what I did do is I used my workmate as a metal workbench I just slide it on crank it down till it drops and then it moves around so all I do is I have it set that I crank this open and it actually grabs onto those flanges on the back. So now I have a, a nice sturdy metal work table. And uh, believe me, it's coming handy over the years. It didn't cost me a thing because it was a fringe I was throwing out anyway. Uh, I'm going to show you one more thing that I made. I was racing. And uh, this was out of necessity. When you ice race cars, they always get damaged. And you're always having to rebuild body or make panels. Now, I just took a couple pieces of quarter inch by six inch wide flat and this is a two and a half or three inch angle iron that I put on the bottom and these are just cheap hinges I welded on. What I do with this, I drop it on there just like that. Crank it shut and it holds it. Sheet metal break. I took an old hydraulic floor jack handle, squared it off, and I welded a piece of square tubing on the bottom so the handle for the brake is removable so it stores easy. And I just have a piece of channel iron. I just drop in place and I just have these cam 
devices. You just have to hook it in. Ah, don't have it centered quite right. And the design was made so when it was centered it would work. I could have made it a little wider, but I seldom need more than about two feet. So that just goes on there. They both just swing up and lock. That's locked in place. It's my sheet metal brake. Does it work? Yes, it does. Let's see if I can find some scrap metal. gauge but it's likely about 18 gauge and uh, like you see all I got to do is slide it in lock it down with the cam one cam in place the other cam is in place Pull them up, lock it. Undo it. There we go. It's not a really, really tight radius, but for most of the body work I do, it works fine. For the ice racer, couldn't ask for better. They say it was uh, attributed to uh, you know, necessity being the mother of invention, so to speak. Uh, trying to figure out, I used to use a couple of 2x4s and I would put the metal in between the two 2x4s that were on edge and mount it in my vise and then I would take a third 2x4 that was about a, six inches longer and hold onto it and then forcibly roll it over. And then once I had it bent, I'd sit there with the hammer and dick around with it. And you know when you do it that way, you're going to get all the little dings and dents. Well, as far as the ice racing goes, the people aren't going to see the car that close anyway. And uh, the odd time I do need one that's absolutely... Uh, 90 degrees. I can bend it a little farther by hand if I have to. It comes close. Um, let's see if I can figure out how uh, how far off it is. One thing to figure it out. One other thing is going to be to read it. Blind is a bat right now. Okay, and we are looking at eighty seven degrees. So eighty seven degrees out of basically one, two, three pieces of scrap metal, an old handle, and these cams, which were actually on a uh, um, they were on some kind of a hospital stool. Originally I had, uh, was using vice grips on there. And I had a couple of vice grips and I put great big hooks on the upper and lower. And then the vice grips I just welded pieces of bar across the, the toe of the, uh, of the, uh, the jaw. I can find them because I never threw them out. Yeah, I used to have, they just used to have a, a hook, and I just took these, welded a couple pieces of rod on them, 
one on the upper side, one on the lower side, and all I did was, uh, there was a, a space, and all I did was put that in between, slide that in. And then on the same on the other side, so it held the upper and lower, and then depending, you know, it gave me some adjustment. Uh, if the metal wasn't quite sitting right, I could adjust it. Um, I could still go back to that. Uh, they worked probably as well as these cam lever locks or whatever you'd want to call them. Uh, I just threw these on and if they worked great, if they didn't, I'd just grind the wells, knock them back off and go back to using the vice grips. But, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, I don't have to do a lot of body work anymore. And the stuff I do, I sell them doing more than just small patch pieces so far. So, only being two feet long, it works fine. And it fits on my workmate, so I don't need a separate stand for it. Same with my metal, my metal table. I just use the same workmate. So, as you can, I think you can see in the corner there, got a nice fire going. It's uh, oh, about 52 degrees in here, and uh, yeah, it's nice. We got a, I don't know, maybe 10 inches of snow. So now it looks like winter. And normally we're coming out of winter by now, and now we're finally getting the snow. So. But we always seem to get one or two last dumps in the spring anyway, so we're not going to be done with it yet. Um, making shop equipment. What a good way to do it. You know, if you, if you have the time and you have the skills, why not? Um, and I used to watch auctions for stuff like that. And... I went to one or two auctions years ago looking for stuff like sheet metal brakes and shrinkers, but they all sold for so high a price because it was industrial stuff that I was looking at. Uh, the kind of stuff that um, fabrication shops would have. Um, it would definitely be nice to, uh, to have the, the room for that stuff too, but I don't. I would like to get a shrinker stretcher. One of the things I always wanted to learn to use is uh, an English wheel. Uh, I really have a hard time not buying one because they have one here at Princess Auto. Um, Princess Auto is kind of like a maybe a fleet and farm or a Menards without the lumber stuff. Uh, it used to be all surplus stuff when it was open years ago. It was a lot of used winches and stuff off army vehicles and trucks and transmissions and uh, casters. Uh, a lot of industrial stuff. And some of it was surplus. But a lot of it was just, you know, stuff was being you know, taken out of service and they salvaged all the stuff. And then they went, gradually went over and then, you know, eventually about a third of their stuff was new and the rest was all reclaimed items and it's gradually gone to now it's all it's all new stuff that they have now. Um, we have a place in Canada uh, if those of you who watch HPR's channel uh, he mentioned uh, Tool Town Tool Town I call it tool time all the time, but it's tool town. And I think their stuff is more aligned with Harbor Freight. Some of the stuff would likely be like a Princess Auto quality stuff, the, the lowest Princess Auto stuff. But Harbor Freight stuff, from what I hear, is likely closer to the stuff that we have at our tool town uh, place. 